this every yeah. time you do something. That's what it's all about. Yeah. Now, we're halfway through the programme, but there is still lots to come. Rachel meets the passionate plant woman, bringing her collection of jasmine to the show. Andy Sturgeon and I have a good look at the conceptual gardens, which always provide food for thought. This year is no exception. And designer Amory Powell joins Joe on a shopping trip for contrasting container gardens. Now, it seems that some plants go in and out of fashion, and heathers are not being grown nearly as much as they used to. And Plant Heritage has recently published a report showing there's a real danger that some of the old varieties will disappear if we don't grow them. Now, the Heather Society is showing here at Hampton Court. And last month, we went and talked to their chairman, David Edge, to see how they would get heathers back into fashion. I did an apprenticeship at the local nursery when I was about 19. Interest in, in the heathers really developed from the diversity of the flower, and so it became a kind of a collector's ambition to collect the varieties. And there's such a range of flower and foliage colour. Uh, in essence, we have something in flower every day of the year, and even when the plant is, isn't in flower, you've still got the attractive bronze and golds and greys foliages there. Well, homegrown heathers are grown by specialist heather growers in this country. And there's a group of about eight to ten producing hardy heathers with such a range of colour and foliage and, and flower. Heathers were in their heyday in the 1970s. That's when I started uh, collecting them. The concept was really for heather beds where you did mass plantings of, of heathers and you plant them in groups of, of say three, five, seven or even larger to get an impact with the flowering. They were used with rockeries, they were planted with conifers. After that they, they waned and people were really looking for something different. So the concept of heathers has changed over the years. It's a more modern aspect of, of looking at the planting and the different ways of utilising them. Well, grasses and heathers go together so well. They've, they've got a natural affinity with each other and you'll find them growing in the uh, Heathlands and on the moorlands, they'll be both growing together quite happily. Well, we've got quite a few different heathers here. This is, this is what is called er Erica cinerea, and it's again a, a, a form of the heather that you'll find growing in the wild and in the forest and on, and on the moorland. But these are colours that have developed uh, with a little bit of breeding and selection to, to provide a greater range of, of habit and, and flower type. Some will flower through the winter and summer flower, right through from, from spring through to late summer and others again coming in in the autumn. This heather is, is, is Devicia. It's got the much larger flower to it with the glossy green foliage. And it's a much more showy plant. After it's finished flowering, you can just trim those flower heads back again and that will produce another flush of flower from these other branches that are just coming up. Summer flowering heathers, rainwater is much better than tap water. You can always be collected from a water tub and store that and then give them a nice drink during those hot, dry summer periods. They really appreciate that. The heathers are vital in the early spring as a source of pollen and nectar for the bees. I can sit by my heather bed uh, and actually listen, listen to it and you have the bees humming there and they'll be going from one flower to another. Mainly bumblebees these days because they seem to have, uh, have diminishing numbers of, of the honeybee. The heather honey is, is normally recognised as being one of the more expensive honeys available in the shops, but also one of the most desirable.
even in the small garden, you, you can have a pot or a tub. They'll home in on a particular variety, whatever is just the right flavour of the day. So David, as well as growing them, collecting them and loving them, you have brought them here at Hampton Court to, to get a good, strong message across because many of them are threatened, aren't they? That's right. We've lost nearly 60% of the 1,500 varieties that were around in the early days. More than half of those have gone now. Wow. And there's no getting those back. So why do you think they fell out of favour in the first place? They went out of fashion uh, after the peak of the interest in the 1970s. They've gone out of fashion and the interest has focused on the other plants. But now we're just beginning to see the initial stages of, of revitalisation and new interests back into them. So you're trying to get younger people involved in them? Because I guess they're seen as an older person's plant in a way. We're looking for the new generation to see new ways of planting. There's lots of different ways these days where the garden is housing pots and tubs and hanging baskets and Heather's have a niche in all of these little units here. One of my pet hate as I drive around is seeing all the gravel deserts. This is how I define them as, as being areas in front of people's gardens or driveways where there's no planting at all, there's no friendliness to the wildlife and the, or the environment and it's not difficult to plant a few heathers in these places to lighten them up with a bit of colour there with the red, white and pinks and the purples flower for three to four months of the year and different coloured foliages as well. well thank you very much, nice to meet you. Thank you.